set the scene. The WSOP main event. The prize pool was over $93 million. To make a profit, you have to be in the top 15% of players. Luckily for me, I had a little bit of help with my buy-in from 888 Poker. It's day one of what will likely be a nine day long event. Nobody wants to go home and me, I'm just trying to survive. It's the middle of day one and I have a pretty average amount of chips. I look down to see Ace King suited. Oh baby. He puts in a thousand chips. The person between us, the small blind, decides to raise him and makes it 3,500. They're playing with a pretty wide range of cards. I feel pretty confident and I decide to raise putting in 7,000 chips. The button decides to fold, but the small blind raises again, this time risking it all. I decided to fold, even though I had one of the best possible hands preflop, unless he's a maniac. The only hands he could have been playing like this were aces or kings. He ended up showing his cards. He had aces, the best possible hand. If I had called, he would have had an 87% chance of winning, likely sending me home early. I ended up surviving day one along with 80% of the field. I started with 60,000 chips and ended with 117, which was over 100 big blinds. Day two, I faced my next critical decision. I looked down at my hand, ace, king off. It's a great starting hand. The first player to act put in a bet of 5,000 chips or 2.5 big blinds. His position implies that he has the strongest range of cards. That being said, I had noticed him playing a lot more hands than he technically should, implying that he may have been playing a wider range of cards. He was also one of the chip leaders at our table and he was using his size to be aggressive. Everybody else folded and I decided to re-raise him to 20,000 chips. I wanted to make it harder for him to call since he was would have the positional advantage. It came out ace of diamonds, nine of clubs, and jack of spades. I had the top pair with the top kicker. I decided to bet 15,000 chips, which was around one third the size of the pot, and he called. I decided to check. It was no longer obvious to me that I likely had the strongest hand because now there were a lot of cards that could beat me, such as ace jack suited, pocket jacks, king 10 suited. He bet 60,000 chips around half of the pot. My hand should beat his range of hands around one third of the time, which I felt like it would, so I went for it. While it improved my hand to a two pair, it also meant that I would lose to any 10 because it completes a straight. My hand wasn't strong enough to bet for value, which means trying to get worse hands to call, so I decided to check to him. He turned up the pressure and bet 45,000 chips, putting me all in. I started thinking, trying to decipher what possible hands he could still have. I easily ruled out aces and kings because he would have re-raised me pre-flop. I didn't think he had a set of jacks or queens, because he would have likely checked since he has showdown value and he should also be fearing the possibility of me having a straight. So what were the possible hands with a 10? Ace 10 suited, King 10 suited, Queen 10 suited, Jack 10 suited, 10 9 suited, and pocket 10s. He wouldn't have continued with pocket 10s because he would have lost to any higher pair. He could have still had any of the others. After he bet the turn, it felt unlikely that he had Ace 10 suited or Queen 10 suited because they're not really strong enough to bet for value. I knew there were only two possible combinations of king 10 suited left in the deck, given that I had one king and there was a king on the board. What about possible bluffs? It would have to be hands like 9-8 suited or 8-7 suited. I couldn't rule them out because he had been playing very loose earlier in the day. Time was ticking. I had to decide whether to risk 45,000 chips to win 239,000. I decided to call absolutely terrified that I was going home. He flipped over 9-7 suited, which I didn't even fathom that he could have had. And I lived to see another flop. We're gonna get to my final results soon. Day four. We were rapidly approaching the bubble, which is the point at which only one person needs to be eliminated for everybody remaining to cash. The bubble ended up bursting and I cashed my first ever WSOP. Now it was time to see how deeply I would run. I managed to quickly make it to the second pay jump of $17,500 because a lot of short stacks were eliminated quickly after. Unfortunately, I too was a short stack. I only had 10 big blinds left, meaning that I'm supposed to either go all in or fold, and I still had to outlast another 200 people for the next pay jump. It was time for the tanking strategy. Tanking...
is when you spend a lot of time to make a decision, even when it's obvious. Remember, there were still hundreds of tables. It was actually profitable for me to take my time because that would increase the likelihood that somebody at another table would get eliminated before I would. I tanked and tanked and finally, the gods rewarded my patience with pocket kings. Everybody folded to me in middle position and I went all in praying that I would get at least one call. I ended up getting called by King Jack off and I was ecstatic. Unfortunately, I ended up losing. He managed to make a straight and I was out of the tournament. If you want to see more things like this, I do have a dedicated poker channel, so check it out.